Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's BU Professional Development Webinar, How to Dress for the Job That You Want. My name is Jeff Murphy, and I'm an Associate Director in the BU Alumni Relations Office, as well as a proud alumnus of the Questrom School of Business. <clears throat> today's webinar is sponsored by BU Alumni Relations and is offered as part of BU Alumni Career Weeks 2017. BU has dedicated the entire month of March to alumni careers with 31 days of networking events, professional development webinars, and panels, both online and in 14 cities around the world. Whether you're a seasoned professional looking for a change, you're new to the job market, or you just need advice to apply to your career, there's likely an event for you. See the full schedule of events now on our website at bu.edu slash alumni slash career weeks. It's important that we get your opinion on how we're doing, so we very much look forward to receiving your feedback via a survey that will be emailed to you later this week. I know we have alumni joining us today from 15 different countries, places like China, Hong Kong, Peru, Canada, England, uh, U.S. cities like Kent, Washington, Alexandria, Virginia, Westlake, Ohio, Naperville, Illinois, Loveland, Colorado, Culver City, California, and as always, dozens of Massachusetts alumni from towns like Jamaica Plain, Franklin, Roslindale, Midfield, Swampscott, Hopkinton, Burlington, and more. For each and every one of you out there, please know that we really do value your opinion on this and every program that we offer. Before I introduce today's speaker, some brief housekeeping notes. As you know by now, this event is being hosted on the Adobe Connect online meeting platform. If you experience any trouble with the audio or visual portions of today's presentation, I'll ask that you please contact Adobe Connect directly. If you want to jot down this phone number, you can reach Adobe Connect at 1-800-422-3623. Today's presentation is being recorded and will soon be made available for on-demand viewing on the BU Alumni Association website, found at bu.edu slash alumni. Our speaker today is very eager to answer any questions you have, and you're welcome to submit them throughout the presentation using the Q&A chat box at the bottom of the screen. I know our speaker is eager to get to your questions, and we should have plenty of time for uh, as many questions as we can today. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker for the day, College of Fine Arts alumna Chandra Kieser. Chandra, Chandra is originally from Boston, has lived in New York City for the last 13 years, and also lives part-time in Italy. She has a diverse professional background, including graphic design, advertising, and marketing. With over 20 years of experience, she's worked in every type of office, from startup to business casual in an agency to corporate at the New York Stock Exchange. After seven years on Wall Street and yearning for a better work-life balance, Chandra created her own business as a personal stylist, and she's also just launched her own brand of Made in Italy handbags. Uh, she'll talk about this a little bit later, but I encourage all of you to visit her website at www.chandrakeezer.com to see her work. Chandra, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I, I think you and I joked about this briefly, but I just found you randomly on the internet and asked you to do this presentation for us. So I really appreciate you doing it for our alumni around the world. I'm gonna go ahead and get your slide deck up and running and then the floor is all yours. Thank you, Jeff. I can, everyone, you can hear me? It's coming through loud and clear. It sounds good on my end. Great. Perfect. Well, thank you so much all for joining. I appreciate your time. And Jeff, thank you for asking me to present. I am thrilled and honored and grateful for this opportunity. And it's pretty impressive that randomly we did connect and that I'm here sharing all about how to dress for the job you want with so many global alumni. Um, thank you again, Jeff, for the introduction. This is quickly um, just notes about who I am and I want to um, share my story quickly with everyone and then as you mentioned I will walk through the slides really quickly and leave room for questions um, and give everyone time back in their day. So just uh, as Jeff shared I'm a BU alumni and I went to school for graphic design and today I'm currently still a stylist and designing handbags but the unique thing is what BU really gave to me was a great network, and I've used it today. And coincidentally, when I was a BU um, in the grad program, there was only 20 students, um, and three of us were here from the United States, um, calling in actually from Boston, but live in New York and Italy, as Jeff mentioned. However, I'm still friends with all of people from all over the world through BU Network, from South Korea, Turkey, 
um, and the list goes on. So the network is strong and powerful, and I'm thrilled to be here. So enough about kind of who I am and what I'm doing. I'm going to take you through um, how to dress for the job you want. So jumping ahead to the agenda, I will share kind of why style matters, how to create your own style, investing in signature items. This is kind of one of my key things. I'll also share lookbooks and some inspiration, um, brands to know, how to edit your closet. And the key takeaways are really tips for organizing your wardrobe, um, having the right essential items, and shopping. And if there's anything that you can take away, it's really the guidelines that I use as a stylist, but anyone can use individually. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in why style matters. So everyone asks, why would I need a stylist, or why is style important, or how can this really help with finding a job or getting to the next level in my job? And it really is not about just being fashionable or spending a ton of money, but it's what the clothes can do for you. And um, creating your own style really does allow you to be an individual and present yourself in the best way. And as much as we like to think people don't judge us or we're not judging other people, we do. It's, we're, it, we're humans. It's just kind of how it happens. And we all know first impressions count. Just as much as you know, the first time you submit your resume, whatever it may be, the way we present ourselves really does matter. And there's a lot of positives to you know, creating your own style and dressing up because we feel more confident. This way we can manage up. Feeling good helps accelerate our career. So as I mentioned, your personal style is really your visual resume. We put a lot of detail um, into our education, into achievements and experiences through our resume. Make sure you know, it has every dot and T crossed. And these small details make a difference with our personal style as well. Um, you know, the way we dress speaks volumes without words. And as we all know, in any job, whether you're in the startup world or corporate world, we set business goals, we have reviews, and we ask for feedback. And as a stylist, I suggest this is the best thing you can do for your own personal style. Set goals, edit your closet, ask for feedback about your wardrobe. Because why not build a wardrobe that reflects your business goals? And we really say, you know, investing as a stylist I share with my clients and other stylists say the same thing. Investing in your individual style has long-term effects and really benefits. You can save money by making small improvements in your style or in your wardrobe. And as we invest in our education, we're bettering ourselves. If we invest in our personal style, we're doing the same thing. So how do you create your own style? And it really goes beyond, you know, people have probably heard, uh, minimalist or chick or casual or preppy. Um, it's really not about labeling. It's about asking yourself, what is it that you like? Think of your personality and the level of effort that you want to put into kind of how much is style important to you. And I know Jeff mentioned there's people joining from all over the globe. And one thing I want to note that styling is very individual and personal. And how I work with clients is upfront asking them kind of what's their budget, you know, what are shops that they and brands that they currently um, shop at today. And really what I'm taking you through in all this content, just note is my day to day is in New York. So it's kind of where I, you know, am influenced for my own personal style, but it really is an individual thing. So what you see here is going to be more New York centric, but I do work with clients from all over the world as I'm working globally. But really it's about creating your own signature look and this applies to whether you're in the corporate setting and you're 80 years old or you know, you're just starting out in the work world and you're applying for a startup and you're in your 20s. It's creating your own signature look and that can be as simple as choosing a piece of clothing or one everyday signature item. For instance, you know, everyone knows, or not everyone, but Anna Wintour is the editor of Vogue magazine, and she's known for her, her hair in a bob and always having bangs. And, you know, James Dean was always known for the white t-shirt. So as a stylist, I encourage my clients to kind of choose what is your signature item, and this really is something you can build off of. Um, a couple other things is skipping the trends. A lot of people ask about trends. Not that I'm discouraging trends, but when you're building kind of your own personal style, it's best to stick with classics. 
And if you really want to keep it simple, just choose a color. And that's kind of the best thing as you go to. Um, and then also upgrading your normal go-to items. If you're always wearing sneakers, that's kind of your day job. Why not invest in nicer sneakers to differentiate yourself from others? Um, and then everyone asks, you know, beyond asking a stylist or friends or family, how can you help create your own style? And whatever business or casual or setting that you're in, just look at those that are in authority and reference them as a visual mentor. If everyone in the office is wearing jeans, then, you know, it's probably kind of what you're supposed to be wearing. But more importantly, sometimes in the corporate world, there are dress codes. Jeff mentioned I worked previously at the New York Stock Exchange. And actually, when I joined, there was such a strict dress code, we couldn't even wear open toe shoes, men had to wear ties on the floor. Actually, when um, Michael Phelps won the gold medal and came to the stock exchange to ring the bell. He showed up in, true to his style, flip-flops and denim jeans and a t-shirt. However, at the tra on the trading floor in that corporate environment, we had a dress code, so we had to scramble and find him a coat jacket to get onto the trading floor. So I've seen it all and, and worked in many different environments myself and had to wear many different uniforms and really, it's just being your individual self, but applying it within the setting that you're working in. And when you're authentic to your own style, you become memorable, and it's the best way is to be true to yourself. So as I mentioned, um, having a signature item, if you can choose one item that you really value, I encourage you to kind of invest a little bit more in these items and in the long run, you will save money. And it's not about spending so much money, but if you value something, you're going to take a better care of it and have it long term, and you'll also wear it more often. So as I mentioned, these signature items, they could be, you know, for women, it could be a handbag. For men, it could be, you know, a great blazer, a nice pair of shoes, and it could be a little bit more money. But again, you're going to have it for years. And usually if you keep classic, it's more timeless and long term. And here I've listed a bunch of brands to know. These are some classic, have been around forever, as well as newer brands like Theory has been around for a long time for women, but Vince is a new brand out of New York. Same for men, you know, Ralph Lauren, everyone knows Calvin Klein, but some of the newer brands, Scotch and Soda, globally. Um, but again, this is really within the New York world. Of course, these brands are global. Um, here I'm jumping ahead but sharing inspirational looks and I will take you through startup, business, casual, and corporate. These are just visuals that kind of give you an idea of the startup world. We all know sometimes startup world means in your garage or working from home in your pajamas, but if you are going to, especially in New York, there's a lot of startup places like WeWorks or whatever, showing up and just putting a little effort into your individual style. For women, it could be denim jeans, sneakers, mules. You see here, I have ripped denim jeans. Nothing wrong with that in the startup world. You're being true to yourself. That's just today's style, and that's where we're introducing trends. But again, if you stick to the classics, that's fine too. For men, it's just putting a little effort into quality items. Denim on denim is a new style and trend at the moment. I've also taken this one step further and shared lookbooks. Um, if you visit um, on the top right, you can see cmkeyser.com forward slash lookbook. You can shop from any of these lookbooks, um, and I really want to do that for everyone to help. I've edited and chosen items. All of these can ship globally. It's not from my website. It's mostly from sax.com, but if you look from left to right, I've kind of shared looks, startup looks for men and for women, and the price points start from low end all the way up into high end. As I know, we have a global audience, so and everyone has different budgets and different needs, so I try to address all of them. But again, styling is an individual thing, and I'm happy to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Reach out to me at any time for guidance. It costs nothing. I love what I do and want to help people in any way. Um, so the startup look, you know, I had mentioned is definitely more denim and sneakers and being true to yourself, choosing what item it is for you that you enjoy or think you value, and that can be your signature item. Business casual is kind of the way many corporate offices are going. Again, at the stock exchange when I joined, it was closed toe shoes. Women were always in suits. And when I left seven years later, men weren't wearing ties. It was more of a business casual look. 
But again, women you'll see are wearing pants today, silk tops. Um, men are introducing more color into their wardrobe. And actually the new kind of for retail men, it, it's huge. Men is a new market in fashion, which we w didn't see 10 years ago. You'll even see in retail stores more emphasis on men and the way they dress. And again, I've created lookbooks. If you look at it from left to right, the pricing um, and individual looks for, you know, if you're in the business casual world. And then last is corporate. Um, you know, this is definitely still for banking, finance, you know, in many um, businesses today, corporate is still the way it is. And, it, you know, you can be individual, but also, um, you know, keep to a classic look and feel. So next thing I want to share is how to edit your closet. So beyond kind of once you understand what your style is, how do you maintain that style and how do you manage your closet? And that's really, I think, one of the most important things um, even if you're working with a stylist or whatever it may be, it's how to do this day in and day out. And I always encourage everyone is to keep the closet um, clutter free. And it really helps keep things organized with a clear mind. Um, less is more. If you have fewer quality items, it's a lot easier to manage than if you have, you know, a ton of clothes, but kind of less expensive and not as well taken care of. A couple of the things I always suggest to my clients is only own things you love. We all kind of acquire things more than we may need, but if you only have things in your closet you love, it's always a good day. And also only keep things that fit. It's hard because I know people, myself too, I have things for different seasons and different times of year, but it's really important to kind of edit the closet and if you haven't worn it in six months, let it go. Donate it. There's so many things, ways you can dress for success. There's a great donation program we've done at our own offices. Coat drives, online, eBay, The Real Real, Poshmark. These are all online sites um, to get rid of clothes. And the more you get rid of, the opportunity to buy something new um, and upgrade your look and style. As I mentioned, updating fall and spring. And then another time that people don't always think about, but I think I encourage is during big life events after a new baby or if you're transitioning to a new job or you, you have just received a promotion or you're interested in getting to the next level, if you just put a little bit more effort and interest into your style, it really will get you to that next level. Um, you know, soon after you get married or entering into grad school, think about what's your look, what's your style and put a little effort into it and it makes it, it, it goes a long way. Um, and then just some tips. It's not just about buying new clothes. You can be shopping from your own wardrobe. So how do you really edit your current wardrobe? You may already have everything that you need. Um, it's just how do you put it together? And that's really sometimes where a stylist comes in. But some things I like to share is ensure that you have all the essentials. And I have a checklist in here. And again, those signature pieces. Do you love all the signature pieces that you have? And one thing I do myself and I do for clients is Organizing outfits really head to toe Monday through Friday. If you kind of know what your schedule is and you just take an hour on Sunday and put looks together, you really don't have to think about getting ready each morning. And, you know, when you look good, you feel good, and it just makes it that much easier. Um, if you're traveling often, just have a checklist um, so you don't forget things. And one thing I do for clients is organizing their drawers. A lot of times we stack items in our drawer. But if you stack them vertically, so when you open the drawer, you can see all the T-shirts or all the socks, everything lined up in one color. It sounds so little, but these small things, you can see everything at once. And then again, you know, when you, if you're in a corporate world or if you're in a non-corporate world and you know that style is important to you, but you don't have a lot of time and energy, keep things simple. For instance, Steve Jobs always wore the same black shirt and pants. He bought those things in bulk and... He didn't put a lot of thought or energy into what he was wearing every day, but he did early on to create kind of a look and feel for himself, and that just made it easier for him. And again, if you're more creative and style is important, go on Pinterest or visit Instagram or look at the mannequins in the store. Here's a list of essentials that I share with all clients, and it's really asking yourself if you have all of these things in your closet and their quality items. And from this, 
you can really mix and match. And these outfits, or excuse me, these essential items can be used for work, weekends, travel. Um, again, it's really the essentials to build off of. And then if shopping is something that you need to do to help build that look and style for yourself to get that next job or next promotion, whatever it may be, this is a quick shopping uh, tips for shopping. So referencing that essential list and at, ensure that you have each of those. If not, that's something you need to go shop for. Know what your budget is and set a budget and really go to stores that you're comfortable shopping in. And I do, I know it's crazy to say, but I encourage people shopping online. It, as a stylist, I spend more time actually shopping online than I do in stores. But with particular clients, sometimes they just choose to be in stores, and I'm happy to do that as well. But the great thing about online shopping is you can order multiple sizes of something. Most stores are free shipping, so it's easy to you know get the small and the medium and try it on at home and share with your friend, husband, girlfriend, whatever it may be, and ask for their opinion. Again, it's creating feedback, editing what you have, and building upon that. And as I said, only keep things in your closet you love and only buy things that you love. And be sure to return items that don't fit. It's painful when you have too many things in your closet and you say, I have nothing to wear, but you really have too many options. And then this is the last thing that I always share with clients, but the biggest takeaway for this presentation, and then I'll open it up to questions. I know I've moved through this really quickly, but it, again, I just emphasize it's such an individual thing about styling and building your own style, but I want to just give a general overview for everyone. So the number one thing is keep it simple. These guidelines kind of, if you reference this, it makes it so much easier. Invest in essentials. So whether it's for men, shoes, cufflinks, a blazer, a suit, whatever your essentials are, make sure that those are things that you kind of really take care of and maybe spend a little more time or money um, in those pieces. And then the next is quality over quantity. I emphasize this so much is just having nice, a few nice things versus lots of too many things. And mixing with high and low. So it's not about spending a ton of money, but if you invest in a few things and then, you know, you go to other stores and mix in, you know, for myself, I'll wear a really nice blazer, but it could be a $5 t-shirt underneath. So it's a great way of mixing high with low in your, in your wardrobe. And this is the way you build a wardrobe and edit it each season. Um, also, I didn't mention much about accessories, but accessories for men and women is a great way to help create your own individual style, but keep it minimal, um, you know, not too many of one thing. Um, keep it simple is kind of the best rule. And then first impression, we all know shoes and bags, um, whether it's a briefcase or a woman's bag that she's carrying and men and women, our shoes, kind of taking care of our shoes. I mean, we don't want to say we judge, but it really it goes a small way, a long way, sorry. Um, the other thing is neutral colors. When you're building out the essentials in your wardrobe, stick to neutral colors, gray, tan, black, white, off-white. If you buy just items in those colors for your essentials, that all mixes and matches, and then you can layer over that with trends, trend items. You know, if there's something new, um, it's an easy way to kind of keep the wardrobe simple. And then the... Um, Last two things I want to say is details. I know that not everyone's kind of obsessed with details as I am and as passionate, but a little extra effort and small details in your wardrobe can lead to big rewards in your career. Um, just spending even, you know, one day each season kind of building out a great wardrobe will go a long way. And stepping outside of your comfort zone, as I said, only have things that you love in your wardrobe, but you know, it can't hurt to kind of go one step further um, in trying something new, a look or style or brand. And it really kind of gives you the confidence to, once you look good, you feel good and you get compliments and who doesn't like that? So really, I just want to um, open this up to questions and thank everyone. And just two quick points. Um, if you do need a stylist, 
you know, you can go online. There's so many, um, and also into the retailers because they have stylists available. It's really a new um, opportunity that people I encourage to take advantage. And if you're in the New York area or virtually, I can work with clients and I have opportunity in the Vince store, 25% off for any um, client that I work with. And if you're interested in a handbag, my website is there and my contact information is below. And I encourage everyone to reach out. I'm happy to work with anyone individually, answer questions. It doesn't cost at all. And that's it. I want to, again, thank you for your time and open to any questions. Chandra, thank you so much for doing this for us. And the fact that you're willing to connect with our alumni for, you know, a, a no cost brief phone call. Um, I'll ask that our alumni not take advantage of you for that, but that's a really generous thing that, that you're doing. So thank you so much for that. We do have some some great questions that have already come in. Uh, so I want to remind folks on the call that to, to type your question into the Q&A chat box at the bottom of the screen. Um, I'm just going to make a small adjustment here so that I can see these a little bit better. Um, Chandra, we might veer off from specific style questions to, you know, more so how style relates to, as we, you know, said today, getting that job that you want. So Anita has asked a question, um, when going for an interview, would you recommend dressing a bit more formal than the company's dress code? Uh, or would you just recommend a suit or, you know, how do, how do you analyze what attire is appropriate for an interview? That is a great question. I, I get this often from clients and I always suggest to go one step further. So if it's a corp, it really just depends on the setting. So if it's a business casual, I would say, you know, dress in a suit. And if it's a corporate environment, absolutely a suit and taking extra detail on you know, for women, it's getting a manicure, or getting your hair blown out. Um, you know, for men, it's making sure, you know, we always want to print our resume or a nice paper or whatever it is. It's like those small details with your personal style are so important. And I know it's really difficult when you are interviewing and you're not sure exactly what the culture is or the dress code there, but just always take it one step further because it really just shows how you value yourself and your self-worth and it shows that you're interested in impressing people because that's really all they have to judge you is when you walk in the door it's that first impression beyond your resume i hope that's kind of answered the question yeah absolutely um carolyn is asking you know you you spoke a little bit chandra about the importance of sort of keeping your wardrobe you know, as lean as possible, only, you know, buying and keeping things that you love. Do you have any suggestions for what you should do with sentimental pieces that you just can't bear to part with? So great question, because this kind of happens to me. I've traveled so much. And so I've kind of acquired things from all over the world and then from friends that have gifted me things. And I do want to say I'm not encouraging people to get rid of things because I have let go of a few things that I, I do miss. Um, but it's really, if it is important and you value it, it, keep it. Keep it for your children or your grandchildren. But make sure that you take care of those things and kind of, you know, for instance, like a handbag, people don't always do this, but it's like it comes in a dust bag. Make sure you put it in the dust bag and make sure you stuff paper inside the handbag, you know, whether it's a, a jacket that was your father's or grandfather's, make sure it's dry cleaned and, you know, do take care of those things and, and keep them. I think it, it, again, it really goes back to like quality over quantity and things that you love, you should have in your closet because you will use them. A uh, really interesting question here that I was wondering myself. Um, how do you, how do you come up with your budget for clothing? Uh, particularly if it's work clothing. Chandra, can you put a percentage on that of, you know, if you've got a budget for the year, what percentage should you be investing in, in you know, your out, outfits and attire for, for, for work or for personal purposes, I guess? Yeah, I don't want to say a percentage. It's not kind of like, you know, they say you shouldn't spend more than 30% on your housing budget based on your salary. But that's why I really encourage people to kind of build a wardrobe. It's really long term. So start with the essentials and each season, maybe you're buying one essential 
And, you know, you're going to have that for three, four, five years, whatever it may be. So, I mean, it really just depends on the corporate environment or excuse me, not the, the work environment that you're in. Um, I mean, it's hard to say a, a percentage, but it's not about going out one day and buying everything at once. And sometimes with clients, I kind of work backwards. Like a lot of us can shop in our own closet. We may not need to run out and spend money. It's really just taking a little extra time and, and seeing what we have, editing it, you know, making sure we have things that we love and, and building a wardrobe long term. I think it's just like anything else, like what you invest in yourself, you know, how much do you spend going to the, maybe like the gym? And that's kind of like an investment in yourself. So I wouldn't be spending more each month, you know, in, in clothing, you know, it's, it's everything in moderation, yeah, I guess is the yeah. easiest answer. Yeah. There's no good answer for that. Certainly. But uh, obviously yeah. it's, it's great to have your, your opinion on it. Uh, Nick, who has asked a question, Nick is uh, now from here on out going to be a friend of mine. Cause he's also asking a question that I had. Um, Nick is describing himself as uh, more of a quote unquote athletic build. Uh, Chandra, I would describe myself as I get older as uh, more of a swollen build, but you had said, um, you know, not to buy anything that doesn't fit. Uh, Nick's question, obviously, uh, with, you know, there's a skinny trend happening right now, and it's hard for some people to find business or business casual clothing right off the rack that fits. Um, Steven has written in asking about tailoring. Um, so how does somebody who doesn't fit, you know, clothing off the rack, do you have any advice for somebody about how to find a great tailor or what is, what are your thoughts about that? Yes, I mean, I didn't put a lot of emphasis on that because I know people are joining from all over, but I'm definitely influenced by Italian dress because I spend so much time there in Italy, and they are all about fit and tailoring, and most people beyond New York City, um, in other places, it's have their own tailor. So, you know, if you're in a small town, I grew up in Burlington, Massachusetts, and I had a tailor that I always went to. And again, I would have items that I had long term and they can let things out or take things in. Um, in New York City, there is pretty much a tailor at every dry cleaner. And again, like everyone's size changes. And if your items don't fit, it's, you know, take them to the tailor. If not, replace them with things that do. And, you know, for athletic builds, um, um, for men specifically, there's a lot of new startup companies that you can go um, and get measured and have things custom built. I mean, you nowadays you can even have T-shirts like sized and you know made for you specifically. It's kind of we're going back to that traditional. This is how the Italians did it. Is and you know they're known for their dress. Is everyone had clothes made individually for them, and that really is happening more and more. So. If anyone has specific questions, reach out to me. I know many stylists. Um, and I didn't even share, but previously I only worked with online um, styling for men and women. So there's so many services out there that I can point to you to. If I don't have the answer, I'll find it and direct you to it. So fit is definitely very important. Yeah. Um, Cynthia has asked uh, if you've, you know, uh, this it gets to some of the things I think that you talked about in terms of essentials, but Cynthia's question is, you know, does your advice change at all for a 60 year old woman who's building a wardrobe from scratch? So sort of. No, it really over. doesn't. Yeah. yeah, no, I have, it's, I do a lot of shopping tours in New York city and many of my clients are 60 plus. It's kind of like they have this new lifestyle. They may have, you know, retired or you know have opportunity and time now to invest in themselves and a little extra money and it just goes back to the basics is you know what is your lifestyle and this is kind of how I work with every client it's what's your lifestyle what's your day-to-day -day, how important is style to you and then that, that's really how I give suggestions so it's very subjective but it, you know if you know that your every day is um, you know not going to dinners and corporate events like obviously that's not a wardrobe that we're gonna build for you but it's understanding what your lifestyle is and how much energy and effort you want to put into it and then 
you know, we do tailor some of the essentials. You don't necessarily need a suit, but it's kind of building a wardrobe is really what I always go back to based on your lifestyle and your budget and kind of your location, wherever you're located and kind of what's around you, your environment. I got another question that just came in. You know, you just started talking about some of the online resources that are, you know, sprouting up here and there. What's your general take on some of these clothing subscription services? I know my wife is a big fan of Stitch Fix, where you have your own, you know, quote unquote stylist, which uh, I often wonder if that, how much that person really is paying attention to you. There, there are other services that allow you to sort of rent clothing and return them. Are there any that you endorse? You know, as a stylist, do you think that these people are getting sort of a, uh, not the deal that they've signed up for? What are, what are your thoughts about those? That's a great question. So I can answer that personally because I worked for Keaton Row. I started in 2010 and they were kind of a competitor to Stitch Fix and I think that's the one that everyone knows the most. Stitch Fix is a subscription base where they um, send you clothes monthly and there's a, a men and a women option, different names, but um, and you know you can choose the items, if not, you return them. So that's a subscription base where Keaton Rowe, um, who I worked for, which was out of New York, was more um, personal. So it was building a relationship with the clients. I am open to all of them. It, it really, because it's individual. I, I know in Boston, like Stitch Fix was more popular in New York. Keaton Rowe was more popular in New York. People had less time and they just wanted that one-on-one -on -one consulting. I mean, coincidentally, Keaton Road just closed their doors after six years last week. I have left. I left a couple of years prior. So things are changing, but there. The, the bottom line is there is an emphasis in the way we dress and look. And not to kind of overshare, but I was so influenced by visiting Europe and spending so much time there, and that is really where they put a lot of energy and emphasis. And I think that is kind of transitioning over to the United States. People are more focused on quality over quantity. So I don't discourage using any of them. You have to just know what works for you. But kind of if you keep these guidelines, you know, too much is, is for, of anything is, is not good. So I'm, I'm open to all of them, but know that it's going to change with time. Sure, here. sure. Dan has asked an interesting question. How would you handle a workplace that has a different style and fits you personally, especially if the workplace is more casual and you like to look more professional? So Dan is asking, should he dress down to fit in with the rest of his colleagues and in the environment that, that he works in? So that is uh, put me on the spot, but I love a challenging question. So. I always encourage everyone to be true to themselves, but you have to be respectful of the culture or environment that you're in. Um, so if everyone's in denim and you're wearing suits every day, you're definitely going to draw attention to yourself. And it just a matter is, you know, if you're wearing suits to the office and you're wearing suits to soccer games, like that's just who you are, then, you know, that that's fine. And just expect that attention, wanted or unwanted attention, I think it's really about a balance and, you know, I've talked with other stylists this, this, and it's really about being authentic. I don't think you have to dress down, but again, it's just kind of respecting the culture and, you know, is that the appropriate uniform or style for the job? As long as you can do your job. I, I think though, it, you know, you can kind of be, it's really a balance. I don't think you have to dress down, but I don't think you need to dress up to impress. So I'm not really answering the question, but it's kind of a no, a little bit in between. Well, it's like you said, and, and you and I talked about, there's no right or wrong answer, right? It, it, you, I appreciate what you're saying about sort of being true to yourself, but you also have to sort of, you know, make an effort to, to not stand out like a sore thumb, I think. Um, Exactly. So, yeah. Um, Anna's asked a great question about video interviews. And Anna, I'm, I'm going to sort of alter your question a little bit. Um, Chandra, any advice for people on how they should approach their attire for a video interview, 
particularly since you know you might only see a person from the shoulders up what what should you do to sort of um accentuate your personal style and and be memorable or maybe it's just you know uh logistical about like not getting washed out in in what you know blending in with your background so what are what's your advice for video interviews yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And I shame on me for not sharing because coincidentally, I was in Italy and interviewed for the Keaton Rowe stylist opportunity via Skype. Um, this was back in 2014. So it was a promotion, actually, and it was via video. And I was like, wow, things have changed how we're kind of all connected on a webinar today and interviewing jobs via video. But it's, again, applying those same kind of principles even in a video interview, I think details are even more important. So it's putting a little extra energy and effort into what you're doing. And sometimes when you have small real estate, you know, you're only in a little screen. It's for men and women. It's the details. And layering really is something that I encourage. In you know, Maybe if you're going into an office, it's head to toe. People can see all of you. But if you're just video, you know, it's for women, it's like a silk top and you know, layering it with um, a jacket and maybe using other jewelry, earrings, you know, scarf, a little bit extra detail really is going to go a long way because that's all people have to see. Same for men. And then even more importantly, it's the environment. So what's behind you, you know, I, and really try to create the setting um, to kind of that's what people are going to see, and it's a great conversation starter, too. And if you don't have a great setting, make sure you're in front of a clean wall. That's number one at a minimum, but if you can kind of have a nice setting behind you, it really just sets the tone and stage for the interview. Chandra, that... Uh, um, with some really helpful advice. Uh, I really appreciate you doing this for us today. Again, I just sort of cold called you and, and said, hey, you, you work as a stylist. Could you do this webinar for us? And I think you've shared some really valuable um, practical advice with all of our, our alumni around the world today. So on behalf of uh, the BU Alumni Relations Office and our alumni everywhere, I just wanted to thank you so much for doing this for us. Thank you, and I encourage everyone to reach out, an email, phone call, text, WhatsApp, whatever. I'm here to help, and good luck to everyone, and, and thank you again, Jeff, and to thank you, BU. Uh -huh. It's our pleasure. I, I want to thank all of our guests for tuning in today. I specifically want to thank those of you who've donated to BU in the past. We really appreciate your support. And as always, if you or any BU alum you know would be interested in doing a professional development webinar like this or have a topic that you'd like to showcase for the BU Alumni Association and our alumni, I'll, please, I'll ask that you please contact me at the Alumni Relations Office or by email at jtmurphy at bu.edu. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Have a great day or a great evening, wherever you might be.